Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashim Ali Khan. So now I'm continuing the problems on Z test. Last two videos I have completed the different type of problems on Z test. The first video on problems are regarding comparing the population mean with the sample mean. Second video I have provided where I have explained you the differences between two samples. The mean of two samples we have compared in the last video. Now in this video I am comparing the proportions. The formula will change. The steps will remain same. The five steps. Laying down of hypothesis, level of significance, test statistic, critical region and lastly decision. These five steps remain same but the formula will get changed. That is the difference. Now in this video I am going to explain you proportions. Comparing two proportions or comparing the sample population proportion with the sample proportion. But before starting the problem number six, I expect my viewers to have a, a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. So always keep ready the problem before watching the video. Take a screenshot of the solutions of these few problems, then I'll explain. See the problem number 6. Totally 5 problems we have completed till the last video. Sixth one. A briefcase manufacturing company claims that 80% of executives carried briefcases produced by them. Verify its claim if in a random sample of 900 executives, 675 used the company's briefcases. Use 5% level of significance. See carefully. Here we have not given any mean value or standard deviation value. Here percentage is given. A company is claiming that 90% of executives will carry their briefcases. That is a claim, contention given by the company. Now an experimenter wants to test whether the company's claim is true or not. So the experimenter has taken a sample of uh, how many executives? 900 executives he has selected. Out of 900 executives, 675 executives carried the company's briefcases. So by using this sample, we can find out sample proportion. Population proportion is given in the problem. That the company is claiming 90%. 90%? No, 80%. The company is claiming 80% of executives carry their briefcases. So this 80% is the population proportion. And we can find out the sample proportion because out of 900 executives, 675 executives carried company briefcases. So we can find out sample proportion. Then compare these two proportion, population proportion and sample proportion and give the decision whether company's claim is legitimate or not. That is the problem. Now, how to proceed? See here. Comparing population and sample proportion, we have two proportions, population proportion and sample. N is equal to sample size, that is given as 900. A sample of 900 executives are selected. And X is equal to number of executives carrying company briefcases. So out of these 900 executives selected in the sample, how many executives carried company briefcases? 675. That is given in the problem. Now proportion, small p. Small p is the symbol for sample proportion. The so sample proportion is equal to x by n. x stands for number of executives carrying company briefcases. How many executives? 675. n is the total number of executives selected in the sample. 900. So 675 by 900 you will get 0.75. That means sample proportion says 75% of executives carried company briefcases. Company is claiming 80%. Company, capital P. Capital P stands for population proportion. Remember these symbols. These symbols are fixed. Already I have explained in the theory video. Parameter and statistic. In that, 
sample proportion always will be denoted by small p and population proportion will always be denoted by capital P. So company is claiming how much percentage? 80%. So P is equal to 0.8. Q is equal to 1 minus P. 80% executives carry company. So how many executives do not carry company brief cases? 20%. So 80% carry. So do not carry 20%. So 0.8 is P and Q is 1 minus 0.8 is 0.2. So from this information we got small p is the sample proportion 0.75. Capital P is the population proportion claiming by the company 80%. And we have calculated Q. That's it. Now we proceed the five steps. As usual, the first step null hypothesis. Null means no difference. That means there is no significant difference between the population proportion and the sample proportion. Whatever company is claiming that is true, that is correct. What the company claims? 80% of executives carried company briefcases. That we accept it in null hypothesis. So P is equal to 0.8, capital P. That means whatever company claims, 80% of ex executives carry company briefcases. That is correct. P is equal to 0.8. There is no significant difference between the population proportion and sample. The company's claim is correct that 80% of exiles carry company briefcases. That is the explanation of null hypothesis. Now, alternative hypothesis is opposite of null. Company claims 80%, but our, but our sample shows only 75%. Sample says it is less than 80%, not 80%. 75 is less. So we will take less than sign. That means P. Alternative hypothesis, P is less than 0.8. Because 75 is less than 80%. That's why I'm taking left tail test. Less than sign. When the sign is less than, it means left tail test. Previous video, I have taken greater than sign. So it was right tailed test. So left tail test. Less than 80% of executives carry company briefcases because sample says less than. Less than 80% of executives carry company briefcases. The company's claim is not correct. So here in null hypothesis, we have taken company's claim is correct. Alternative hypothesis, company claim is not correct. Now, level of significance alpha 0 0.05. Nothing is given, we assume. No, given. Yes, it is given. If nothing is given, we would have assumed. But here it is given. The test statistics. Since the sample is large, because sample is how much? 900. It's a large sample. So, under HO, the test statistic is. Here the formula will change. Z is equal to small p minus capital B divided by PQ by N under root, capital P, capital Q, PQ by N under root. This is the formula to calculate the computed value of Z. Substitute the values. Small p. How much is a small p here? 0.75. Capital P, 0.8. The so 0.75 minus 0.8. You'll get minus 0 0.05. Divided by PQ by N. PQ is P, 0.8. Q, 0.2. So 0.8 into 0.2 divided by 900, n is 900. So 0.8 into 0.2 divided by 900, you will get 0 0.000178 under root. After root, you will get 0 0.01334. Now divide 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.01334, you will get minus 3.75. So computed value of z, we are getting minus 3.75. Now we need the critical value. So critical region. The table value of Z at 5% level for left tail test is minus 1.65. In the previous video, I have taken right tail test. So it is right tail test. This is plus 1.65. Plus 1.65. When it is left tail test, it is minus 1.65. When the tail is left side. Critical region is on left side. So the critical region lies for Z 
less than or equal to minus 1.65. Any value which is less than minus 1.65 will fall in rejection region, critical region. So table I have drawn. The 0.5 area on the left side. At what percentage level of significance we have? It is 5%. Uh, 5% means 0 0.05 is the critical region. This critical region is 5.05. I'll write out here 0 0.05. Now, what is the unshaded region? The total area under normal curve is 1. 0.5 left side, 0.5 right side. So, your left side 0.5 minus 0 0.05. 0 0.05 you get 0.45. Now, 0.45 is the area. Now, you see the uh, table, area table. I have provided this area table in the link under my description PDF I have given you can take a printout of this one or else you can uh, refer any textbook or in Google also you can get area table so from this area table in the body of this table you'll find all area so we need the area 0.45 so if you search here you will get 0.4505 Exactly 0.45 you will not get 0 0.4505. So 0 0.4505 is in the line 1.6, is in the row 1.6, and column is 0 0.05. 0 0.05. So 1.6 plus 0 0.05 is 1.65. Left hand side, that's why we should write minus. Minus 1.65. This is the critical value. Right? Now we have to take the decision. Compare the computed value with the critical value. The computed value is minus 3.75. Remember, minus 3.75 is less than minus 1.65. So your minus 3.75 will lie somewhere here. Minus 3.75 is less than minus 1.65. So it falls in rejection region. When it falls in rejection region, null hypothesis is rejected and alternative hypothesis is accepted. So what alternative hypothesis says? The percentage is less than 80%. The company's claim is wrong. The company claims 80% but reality it is not 80%. Less than 80% of executives will carry company brief cases. So here. The computer value of Z minus 3.75 is less than the critical value minus 1.65. So it falls in rejection region. Now hypothesis is rejected. We conclude that less than 80% of executive carry company briefcases. The company's claim is false. That's it. So this is the first problem on proportions. Now next problem you see. Problem number 7. A manufacturer of patent medicine claimed that it was 90% effective in relieving an allergy for a period of 8 hours. So a drug manufacturing company is claiming that whatever medicine they have prayed, uh, prepared that is 90% effective in relieving from allergy. Now in a sample of 200 people who had the allergy, the medicine provided relief for 160 people. In order to test whether the company's claim is correct or not, company is claiming 90%. 90% of the patients are getting relief from allergy. That is the claim of the company. Now to check that we have taken a sample of uh, 200 people who are suffering from allergy. And out of 200, 160 got the relief. Determine whether the manufacturer's claim is legitimate. Whether the company's claim is correct or not. Exactly similar to the previous one. Previous case, it was brief cases. Now there is a medicine. Now, N is equal to number of people in the sample. What is the sample size? 200 people. X is equal to number of people got relief from allergy. So out of 200 people, how many people got to the relief? 160. Given in the form. So small p, sample proportion. X by N. That is 160 by 200. You will get 0.8. The so sample says 80% of patients got relief from allergy. 80%. Sample says. Whereas how much company says capital P is equal to population proportion 
company is claiming 90% but sample is showing only 80% just like the previous photo. So capital P population proportion 90%. So P is equal to 0.9. Then Q is equal to 1 minus P. 90% getting the relief. So how many are not getting the relief? 10%. 0 0.1. 0 0.1. So now null hypothesis. We have written whatever is given in the problem. Now null hypothesis HO. HO. P is equal to 0.9. That means whatever the company claims is correct. There is no significant difference in population proportion and sample proportion. Whatever company says that is true because it is null hypothesis, no difference. So here there is no significant difference between population proportion and sample proportion. The company's claim is correct that 90% is effective in relieving from allergy. Whatever company says that is true, 90%. Alternative hypothesis opposite. The company's claim is not true. Less than 90% patients are getting relief from allergy because sample is less. Sample proportion is 0.8 only. But the company is claiming 0.9. So here left tail test. P less than 0.9. Because our sample is 0.8 only. P less than 0.9. Left tail test. So less than 90% is effective in relieving from allergy. So the company's claim is not correct, exactly similar. Level of significance alpha 0 0.05, not given in the problem, so I've assumed. Now test the statistics. Since the sample is large, 200 people. So under HO, the test the statistic is small p minus capital P, divided by PQ by N under root. Exactly same problem, previous problem. Small p is 0 0.8, so 0 0.8 minus 0 0.9 divided by 0.9 into 0.1 divided by 200. Now 0.8 into minus 0.9 is minus 0.1 divided by 0.9 into 0.1 divided by 200. You'll get 0 0.0045 under root. So after root 0 0.021213. So z is equal to minus 4.71 computed value of z. Now critical region. Same critical region what we have done in the previous problem. At 5% level for left tail test, the critical value of Z is minus 1.65. You can see here. Minus 1.65 is the critical value of Z. Exactly same thing. The table value of Z at 5% level for left tail test is minus 1.65. So the critical region lies for Z less than or equal to minus 1.65. Any value which is less than minus 1.65 will fall in rejection region. Our computed value minus 4.71. So minus 4.71 4 is less than minus 1.65. So this is minus 1.65. Below this we are having minus 4.71. So it falls in rejection region. Null hypothesis is rejected. The company's claim is rejected. And ultimately we conclude less than 90% of patients are getting the relief from allergy. Alternative hypothesis we accept. The computed value of Z minus 4.71 is less than the critical value minus 1.65. So it falls in rejection region. HO is rejected. We conclude that less than 90% of patients are getting relief from allergy. Company's claim is incorrect. That's all. This is the end of problem number 7. 7. Now, 8th and 9th problem, I'll do it in the next video. Because 10th problem is simple one. You can do it yourself as a practice problem. I'll give the explanation. 10th problem. 8th and 9th problem, we'll do it in the next video. So don't skip the next videos. 10th one. Random samples drawn from two countries gave the following results regarding the height of adult males. We are measuring the height of adult males in two countries, country A, country B. And we got the data. Mean height, X bar 1 is 67.42, X bar 2, 67.25. Standard deviation, 2.58, 2.50. Number of observations, sample size, N1 is 1000, N2 is 12,000. Is the difference between the mean height of two countries significant? This is a problem of comparing two samples, just like the last video, not this one. These problems are proportion problems. In the last video, I have compared two sample means here also. 
a person, a researcher wants to find out whether significant difference arises between the height of male persons in two different countries. So he has collected the data. What is the data? N1, number of persons in A country, 1000, number of persons in B country, 12,000. For A country, X bar 1, mean height, 67.42. For B country, 67.25. Standard deviation of A country, 2.58. B country, 2.50. Simply apply the same formula what we have done in the previous video. So null hypothesis, mu1 is equal to mu2. No significant difference between the height of A country and B country. The mean height of males of the two countries are same. Alternative hypothesis. The heights are significantly different. Mu1 not equal to mu2. We are not saying less than or more than. We are simply saying whether the mean height is same or not same. So when null hypothesis is same, alternative hypothesis not equal to. Two tail test. Two tail test. Level of significance alpha 0.05. Assumed. Test statistic. In the previous video, I applied the formula x bar 1 minus x bar 2 divided by sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 under root. But sigma we are not given, s1 is given. So we'll take s1 whole square by n1 divided plus s1 s2 whole square by n2. Substitute all the values, you'll get z is equal to 2. Computed value of z is 2. Now critical value, the table value of Z at 5% level for a two-tailed test is 1.96. Two-tailed test, that's why I'm writing plus or minus. Two-tailed test plus or minus 1.96. For one-tailed test, it is 1.65. One tail. For two-tailed test, it is 1.96. I've already explained the last video also. So refer the last video. Now z is equal to 2 plus or minus 1.96. So our computed value is positive. So don't consider negative. Ignore the negative. Compare the positive. The positive value is plus 1.96. Computed value 2. So computed value 2 is greater than the critical value plus 1.96. Critical value 1.96. So 2 is falling in the rejection region. Null hypothesis is rejected. Null hypothesis, what we said, mu1 is equal to mu2, that is rejected. Alternative hypothesis is accepted. What is an alternative? Mu1 not equal to mu2. The ultimate conclusion, the mean height of males of the two countries are significantly different, not same. That's all. So this is the end of 10th problem. Inshallah, we'll continue the next problem in the next video.